everyone, welcome to unit number two. In unit number two, we're going to be talking about how companies analyze the work and design the job. So let's jump into this. Uh, so in this case, for example, we're going to look at the, some of the best practices HR. Uh, here we talk about um, how a Google vice president says, goes through the processes really how they design the jobs, how they understand what the company needs and how they get the best talent. So please take a look at it. Yeah. So let's first talk about the workflow design. So in this case, we need to understand the whole process, right? For this one, we will talk a lot to operations. Uh, the people in the operations are going to tell us as an HR professionals, we have this system Sometimes we may not understand the technicalities of the machines or the process, but that is where, again, we will talk together with the operations and say, okay, so what kind of employees you need? What is your process? Where do you need people? How many hours? What is, I need to talk to finance as well in terms of budget, how much budget we have, et cetera, et cetera. So we understand the whole flow of the process from materials to production to delivery, how it works, we need to understand where we need employees and what kind of skills need on each one of them. Okay, so here we have, for example, a, um, here we have, for example, da, da, da. we have the raw inputs, we have the equipment, and then we have the human resources. So we have three things that we always need to think about, like again, what kind of materials we have, but most importantly, what equipment and what human resources. So, because in the end, this tell us what kind of machinery we need to operate, what kind of expertise in that machinery we need. Uh, in terms of the human resources, again, how many people we need. Uh, let's say, for example, I went some time ago to the Kia factory. And in the Kia factory, something happens that I see very little humans, uh, mostly with robots. But um, what what the job was from the employees was to operate some of that uh, complex machinery. And some other was just looking at the final touches and see, we'll try to see whether there's any defects or measure some things and so on. So uh, again, Kia has a very specific workflow that they use less humans as they can. So in this case, that leads us to think of what activity they're going to perform. And in terms of the output, how many, in this case, for example, for Kia, how many cars we are producing per day. I can remember exactly. They mentioned that time, I don't know, 2,000 cars per day or so. So they have their KPIs and they uh, they they know they know what they want to fulfill over time. Okay, very good. So, so no, let's continue. So in this case, like I said, we had the workflow design and an organization structure. So we have different structures because sometimes we have a centralized uh, where everything happens. The, um, the uh, we have most of the processes happening at the same part. We have decentralized, where decentralized and functional, both very similar, where we have teams that are specifically focused on specific things, and that's why we have smaller teams. It's a very modern approach. Centralized is more very old type of production, where we have line productions and everything happen at the same time line but nowadays is different the decentralized started to happen for example with toyota and uh, uh lockheed martin also lockheed martin has uh, uh this um, skunk works they call it in the skunk works we can see that there's different departments smaller teams and they work all in the same project so we have different different areas also we have functionals they just produce they say for example one part of the car they just focus on the chassis and that's it but not, not nothing else a, and then we have on the pro product or customer. So in this case, we have more a working in the final product or perhaps we just work on the customer, on the customer service. So we have different types of the organization they, that we need to take care of. So when we talk of a job analysis here, for example, we say firefighter. So we have specific tools and a specific physique that we need from them to carry out this job. So we do a job analysis of what we need. So we need someone of this height, 
we need of this uh, physical strength. And although it's very simple, we, we, we require people with those specific abilities or skills, right? So in this case, like I said, we have in the job analysis, the first thing that we have to do is um, the getting a lot of information from the operations, uh, from the operations, from the operation itself, operation managers, we get to get a lot of information in terms of performance, hours, machinery, etc. And we work with them, work together and see what we need. Right? So with that, we have a job description. So in this case, for example, we need a sales assistant. Okay, so we need a sales assistant. What for? What do they need to do? So first of all, they need to have the things arranged in order. They need to do know how to carry out the stock, how to take measurement of the stock. They need to do also the cashier. They need to do some administrative work. So based on those parameters, we start to start to do the job analysis of how many people we need in store. And then we write a job description. Right? What what would we need the job description? Let's put it this way. So you want to hire someone to work in a retail shop. Like I said, maybe XX brand for Nike or whatever it is. Right? So in the job description, I'm going to see you're going to be taking care of the stock. You're going to be taking off cashiering. And the cashiering means that you're going to be involved with money. So your mathematical ability must be at least very simple, but must be there. Uh, we also need you to be folding the things. We need you to reach certain heights and carry heavy things. And all of those must be in that description. Job of specifications it requires you to work from eight to five, weekdays on weekends, uh, specifically more on weekends because we have more customers. So again, the more specific we are, the better the job will, the better the right expectations will be set for the employee. Because sometimes that doesn't happen. So we have to think of that, right? Very good. So in this case, uh, we have the job description, like I said, you have seen it. Whenever you have looked for absolutely any job in your life, appears a job description. You will be doing this, 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 that. And then after that, we're going to pay you this and that and that and that. Send your resume. So we have that. It has a little of essential duties with the sales specifications. And again, the more detailed, the, 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 the least anxious you will feel as an employee. I think anxiety. No, I think <laughs> researchers know that. Many employees get very anxious and nervous because they really don't know what to expect. So the clearer are the expectations, the more likely the employees feel better than they know what they will what to expect. Here, for example, we have a sample of a job description that one you can read on your own, right? And uh, in the job specification, we have a list of the CASAO. Well, we call it the CASAO. So the CASAO is a knowledge, skill, ability, and other characteristics. So what kind of knowledge you have, right? A in order to, to, to perform that job, what kind of skill? I need someone very skillful or not salary. Other abilities that you have that is not skill is more like, uh, let's say, for example, if you have some good leadership or you can talk well, uh, that's what talks about as, as ability and other characteristics, which is maybe perhaps you have a need. Maybe you have a certification in sales, right? So let's talk about, again, the retail job. So what do you know? Uh, these people is very knowledgeable in terms of, again, in terms of cashiering. He knows some administrative jobs. He has some flair with a customer to talk to them, to talk to them, interpersonal ability. That works very well for them. Uh, they have the ability to close a sale. They have those skills, those administrative skills. And again, they have other characteristics. Like, for example, they have a diploma in fashion retail. So when we look at all of this, matches a good employee, yes, then that's what we need. How many of them we need? I don't know. It depends on the operation. But again, we have done the job analysis and that works very well. What's going to happen if we don't know the sales required for that job? We may hire someone that is very shy uh, and that doesn't work because you need to close the sale. So the, the higher the sales that you have at the, at the shop, then perhaps the better, right? And then later we go to performance, which is, I mean, the higher the performance, of course, they get some bonuses or something. But let's go back a little bit to the to the sales and knowledge, skills, ability. This guy doesn't have the ability to sell. He's not a good employee 
or perhaps he doesn't have a good mm, skill or ability or knowledge of how to operate a computer, a cashier, and that doesn't work very well. I saw it the last time with a woman, though. He was a very old woman, and um, he was in retail. So <laughs> I remember she was trying to cash her and she was very slow because she was trying to figure out how the iPad works. It's as simple as that, but in the end, she doesn't have that basic knowledge that is required for this specific job. Yeah, maybe uh, they give them an opportunity because they know she can learn very quickly. But at least when I met her, when I, when I experienced that, I saw that she didn't know how to use it then. Then you can see that the younger woman no comment there tak, 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 very quickly because it's it's natural of younger generations to know how to use that kind of uh, hardware, right? Very good. So um, we have how do we do this job analysis? Like I said, we have the incumbents, the sources of job information. Who gives you that information? Well, it's people that has been in operations and sales or in the respective department. No, it can be if it's in the logistics. They, the logistics people, they're going to give information. If it's in the finance department, they're going to tell you, we need these people that do this, 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 and that. So usually the HR department has a, has to have a very good, strong communication with all the different departments that require people because in the end, they're going to tell us what they need and we'll find the best within within that also the budget that we have because we cannot just say I'm just going to hire the best the best accountant in the world but I don't have the budget for that so uh, or sometimes we're lucky we can hire someone that has a lot of skills abilities and stuff and uh, he couldn't find a job and we were his uh, last option so it's also about luck no I mean uh, we can pay we can have a lower salary and sometimes people take the job for different reasons and that's something that also we as HR practitioners we need to be very flexible of what why people is working in a certain company you know so maybe maybe he this person just wants a more relaxing job and that's why he chooses this company or near your house or i don't know there's 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 many of these okay so uh we have also the position analysis questionnaire so in this case um, in this case uh we as hr practitioners we we can get a lot of information from the different departments by doing this this position analysis questionnaire. So in this case, uh, we ask already the people in the department, what do they need to do? Uh, what is the work output that they have to do? How many how many area or hours they need to work? How many uh, tools they have to produce, etc., etc. The job context in which industry and other things. So throughout these questionnaires, we can do that. Okay. Uh, also, we have the Flashman job analysis system which uh, we have is a job analysis technique that asks, uh, again, the experts to explain a little bit more about the job. So we will try in our best capacity to understand what they want, what they need, and try to write that job description and that job analysis and then design the job for the right, for the right person. This is a bit more open, right? So uh, in this case, we need to understand also the teamwork, who they're going to be working with, sometimes whether it's complementary to other people's skills or abilities. And uh, also we need to understand, again, the composition of the teams, how they have to deal with orders, who are the bosses, what is required out of them, and how they can work in a certain specific team. Some teams are very high performance teams, so I need high performance. Or there's a team that have, they're very high performers, but it's very authoritative. So in this case, I need someone that follows instructions only and just shh, don't talk at all, right? So um, again, in this case, it's important to have a good job analysis because the clearer it is, um, the better path we have for the employees and the more that we can squeeze them in some certain way. Means we can know maybe we need um, less employees, we redesign the job to make it easier, or to make it less straining for them. And so that happens, right? Also the same thing, uh, if we understand the job analysis, we can say, okay, so it happened, I don't know, for example, when I used to work for American Airlines, we have the performance appraisal and the training, you no? Know? So performance appraisal was how many calls you received and how many calls were successful, whether you follow all the protocols that we 
taught you during the training. And based on that, every month they will assess you. They will hear your calls. If you were in the in the, in the call center, hear your calls, how you talk to the customer, et cetera, et cetera. And based on that, you'll get a tick. You did it very well this month or nope, you didn't very well. So uh, we need to change because indeed the customer service satisfaction is not at the levels that we want. Okay, so in this case, it was very clear. There were there were things that it was already stipulated. The employee has to have this, do this, do this, do this. Da, 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 da. There were a little things and ticks and don'ts. So um, every end of the month, we will talk to the employees and say, okay, you did fulfill, you didn't fulfill. Okay, so now again, transit job analysis. So nowadays, uh, uh, jobs are changing. We're trying to make it more fulfilled. Uh, more fulfilling for employees we want them to have a better professional life rather than just doing the same work all the time we want to hear them we want to involve them we want to make them feel uh, rewarding at their job that they are needed not disposable that's a very bad practice in many companies that is oh well if you're not here i'll just hire someone just buy i don't need you that, that makes employees feel very bad. So that's something that is changing because companies are thinking of how can I provide that security to employees? How can I make them feel good about what they're doing and how they give back to us as well, right? So in this case, we have the job redesign. Like I said, companies are thinking that jobs are not stable. They are constantly evolving. The functions that they have to do are constantly moving and evolving. So we, we need to adapt to that and change as as much as we can. So approaches to a job design. Again, we have, for example, now uh, industrial engineering. Industrial engineering thinks of how we can do machines to be more efficient. And that goes together also, for example, with ergonomics. How can I make employees work better based on with less moves, try to be more efficient, how to redesign the whole plant so that we um, we save time, we have less employees, or if we don't have less employees, at least uh, make them more efficient in some certain ways. Again, like I was saying, we have design for motivation, which is how can I make employees feel better with what they are doing? So I give them a voice, I let them express what they want, what they feel, and sometimes bring innovations to the work itself. You know, if an employee says, you know, I think that the, 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 the the production line is not very efficient because I have to work walk from here all the way to there to bring the boxes. So if we had a warehouse or a small warehouse on this side, perhaps that work that could be better. So if bosses listen to that and say, yeah, I think that's a great idea. Let's just analyze it. They bring it to the to the industrial engineer and say, okay, what if we change the line a little bit? Then it changes, and then employees feel very good about it because they say, okay, you they, they listen to me. Rather than I spend 20 minutes carrying those boxes all the way from there to here. Now, I they listen to me and I feel good about it because, I mean, I'm bringing something to them. And then also we have um, design for mental capacity, which is how can we stimulate employees so that they don't keep on doing the same repetitive actions over time. That is very tiring and in the end demotivates employees. So how can we then give them more tasks or things or make them feel that they are involved in the company and they are really part of it, right? So um, in this case, this is what I was talking about. For example, we have skill variety, task identity. That means that whatever you're doing, it's important. <laughs> so this is something that we try to do with employees nowadays, which is you're not just a knot that can be replaced as easily as can. You're, you're, doesn't matter that it's a small or very small thing during the production line or during the service. What you're doing means something to the company. We can lose a customer because of you. So in this case, you are a very critical part of it. Right. So in this case, again, we have how, how when, when we think of the old way of designing jobs is just do the same thing, do it repeatedly, we don't listen to your voice, just shut up and do and do it a thousand times. That has changed and it's changing slowly and slowly. So again, that, that happens also when we design jobs that have more things to do, more things to do that are interesting for the employee, 
not just more things to do because we give you more to do. And we have, again, the job extension and job rotation. We change you. Sometimes you do this, sometimes you do that. So at least you get a fresh, a fresh, um, a fresh uh, change of mind, right? Very good. So in this case, we also can talk about, for example, um, self-managing work teams, which is they, we let them operate in the way that they want. Yeah, of course, the company has a certain way to operate and you still have to uh, follow all the major umbrella policies of the company, but at a minimum scale, at a smaller scale, we give you some freedom, right? So you can come at maybe, the, the supervisor says, you can come at any time you want, as long as you perform this, right? So we give them more flexibility and that's something that is working very well. Hey, again, in this one, we have alternatives to the eight to five jobs. So in this case, we have the flex time, which is you, you can you can take up your breaks as long as your job is done. We have the job sharing, which is also, for example, if you if we have I have two employees that can do the same job at the same time. Then, sorry, same job at the same time. The same job, you can take turns and perhaps help each other in some certain ways. Maybe you can do this while the other one is performing the same thing right so also we have the compressed work week maybe work longer hours and then some other days you don't work so in this case we have ways of redesigning so employees feel better have more flexibility that is ultimately what new generations are looking for flexibility can i go on a holiday whenever i want yes because there's someone that can do your job for you right so then here it is a flex time and the job sharing right and nowadays uh, the, the current situation forces to telework, no? work at a distance. And uh, the companies didn't want to do it, but now because of Corona has changed the whole situation and uh, companies are looking for doing this more and more in a better way, right? And lastly, let's talk about ergonomics. So in the job design, again, uh, employers are thinking of how can I make the work better for the body, the physiology of the employees. You realize, for example, when you click, no, you just click, 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 click. And then here you have, for example, one little bone. So pretty much is not in a natural way. Well, I don't know if you can see. So, for example, now the, some companies say we're gonna we're gonna think of the ergonomics of that because there's many employees that perhaps because they are too much time on the computer, they are facing a lot of um, trauma in that specific part of the wrist. So we're going to buy for them the mouse that is on the side and that one doesn't have that issue. So this is just a very simple example. But of course, again, the economics also go into companies that require more physical skill. So how can we rearrange everything so that's easier for the employee to really carry out their work? So with that, we're done for this unit. Um, if you have any questions, please, you can ask them directly in the eCampus. Yeah, or again, you can contact me anytime. Thank you so much and I'll see you in next unit.